Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well and you're having a good day. If not, let me know about it and let's see if we can cheer you up. NFTs have by far been without a doubt the biggest thing in 2021 by a landslide. On the board Ape Yacht Club on Ethereum to Aurorians on Solana, there's been no shortage of products that are dropping almost every other day. With the sheer number of projects launching, however, it can become quite difficult to identify the solid projects from the fodder that is just existing out there at the moment. So I, I get the question, what makes a good project a lot? And today I want to try and explain what I believe makes a good project. So let's break it down. First and foremost, communities, 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 right? There are so many different types of NFT projects within the space. We have community, community based projects like the Solana monkey business who set up the Monkey DAO or Monkey DAO, a community of SMB holders with the stated goal of cooperation, sharing alpha, swapping skills, and generally enriching the Solana ecosystem. Community is one of the most important aspects of any NFT project. Did you hear that? The most important, in my opinion. People love to feel like they're a part of something bigger. Community is what humans thrive on and building communities taps into that. NFT communities provide an outlet for that desire. And the stronger the community, the more FOMO, fear of missing out for others. There's a direct, of, direct effect on the valuation of the NFT associated with that community. How much are those not involved in a successful community willing to part with X to be involved? Building a solid community and creating a sense of involvement that in the community is identical to the concept of brand loyalty. To summarize, brand loyalty is defined as the positive association that a customer feels towards a specific brand or product. I love our favorite clothing brands, our favorite car brands, favorite games console, but you get the point, right? The number one factor that turns an NFT project from just another JPEG, right, into being a sought after, legitimately value asset is that brand loyalty and something else, but we'll get into it. That one step further, because it's, it's, it's owning that NFT associated with a reputable community that you essentially become a part of when you own one. The NFT is essentially a membership card, right? To an exclusive club that no one can take away from you. And people want everyone to know they're part of a community. That's the whole point of, well, it's not the whole point, but it's part of the point of these NFTs being in open wallets, being at you, you being able to see other people's things on OpenSea so that you can go and look at what, you know, your favorite influencer has, your favorite uh, tech CEO has and see what they're buying. And if you like that, well, then you're going to try and buy it yourself. Going back to the Monkey Dow example, to become a part of that club, each member must own at least one SMB. There will only be 5,000 SMB NFTs and they've all been minted. That means for a new member to join the MonkeyDAO community, they have to purchase an SMB from an existing holder, add enough value to the community and suddenly becomes a point at which very few SMB holders are willing to part with their monkeys because they'll be selling their membership card essentially. Big brain. Gaming NFTs. Over and above the core community concept, many NFT projects that have use cases go beyond access to an exclusive club. One form of this, or one form, one use of an NFT is to represent an in-game character. Item, playing card, power up, property, the list goes on. Innovation is especially important within the gaming NFT domain, right? Uh, it's always... <sighs> It's difficult with games because the simpler the game design, the less complex the graphics are, the easier the game is to implement from a development standpoint. The easier the game is to develop, the more likely the team is to deliver on the roadmap. And within a relatively short period of time, you can actually have a game out that users are able to interact. To create an open world sandbox type of game is extremely, <laughs> extremely intensive, like time intensive, and takes away huge amounts of resources purely to make the game look good. Additionally, the amount of time to properly create a three-dimensional game from scratch is significant, and the potential for bugs is exponentially greater. The current state of the NFT gaming, we tend to work on the premise that simple is better. Simple is achievable. A lot of projects out there are promising Grand Theft Auto type games that are not quite frankly ready anytime soon, right? You're going up against people like Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption, GTA, Fortnite. If they're ever built a tool, now that's not to say that it's impossible to create a game with extensive depth and complexity, keeping that depth and complexity to the back end, creating a relatively simple front end is a much more realistic part. So to be perfectly honest, it seems unreasonable that any game offering a massive sandbox open world type experience within a year that isn't coming out of these massing game, uh, gaming companies. I would double check on that. I would genuinely have a look at the white papers and the roadmaps to see, and who's on board to see who is, uh, to see if this thing is actually legit. Otherwise you're probably being scammed. Utility-based NFTs. Another example for creating value for NFT minters and holders is attributing a utility to the token. 
If a project can create a use for the NFT, then immediately creates demand and incentive to hold the token to take full advantage and use of the incentives. There are projects that offer at least some kind of incentive for owning one of their NFTs. One example is the full send meta cards. Another example would be vFriends. Another one is Board Apes. For the projects that establish communities such as Friends, Providing incentives for their NFTs and rewarding those who contribute is essential for strengthening the community. A single person or VC would have been able to buy out the initial token, the initial DEX offering or the IDO and acquire an oversized allocation and essentially just pump and dump when it's beneficial to them and your average Joe is left picking up the pieces, having lost out on thousands, right? Which doesn't really seem fair. By offering the tokens to individuals that have already purchase the NFTs, NFT holders have essentially decentralized their protocol and its governance, while also adding value to the community through the NFT Mint. Additionally, you are able to benefit the entire ecosystem that NFT is in, whether it's, for example, vFriends, you're benefiting the Gary V audience because you are providing value to its community through all of this stuff. And it's over and above anything that you would get free through social media, to be perfectly honest. You get access to the V Friends, the V Conference, which has a huge amount of speakers coming to it, supposedly, right? For instance, with something called Genesis Go, which is on the Solano blockchain, they offer free usage of the protocol that benefits the whole system by providing computing power at no extra cost. Over and above, this is why they have rewarded existing users with an additional month extension. The community didn't even have to mint or hold an NFT to benefit from this. It is the kind of utility and incentives, and incentives program that ensures the community retains brand loyalty while also attracting new users who might not have otherwise heard of the protocol. And then we have the absolute fodder, the useless NFTs. We've spoken in depth about what makes a project an attractive value proposition. You're looking at utility, you're looking at community, you're looking at game development, right? Those things can be in, those can, things can be done together and the gig, they can be done separate, right? But then you have the absolute, for lack of a better word, rubbish, right? And creating art, minting, copy, paste, mint again is not an attractive way of creating an NFT community. However, is a very good business model at this current moment in time for a quick buck which is why you'll see so much rubbish out there at the moment that you are going to have to shift through to find the real diamonds in the rough. Every Tom, Dick and Harry is doing it, right? You just look at OpenSea and there's just, it's chaos half the time. We can draw some of the comparison of what's going on at the moment in the NFT world with the ICO craze in 2017, 2018, and look where most of the tokens are now. They're pretty much non-existent, right? Will the floor price be, be in six to 12 months? Who knows? But with the rubbish stuff, with the ones that you are essentially just buying an image, I would buy that image if it makes you feel something. Do not buy those images if you are trying to make a quick buck on it because the hype train only lasts for so long and the likelihood is you'll be caught out. Just a few wise words from Uncle V. Have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye.